I'll just read on a little further from what we have printed in the order of service. Paul is talking about wisdom. And he says that Jews demanded miraculous signs and the Greeks look for wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified, stumbling block to the Jews, foolishness to the Gentiles. But those whom God has called, both Jews and Greeks, God, the power of Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than man's wisdom, and the weakness of God is stronger than man's strength. Brothers and sisters, think of what you were when you were called. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many of you were of noble birth. But God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. He chose the lowly things of this world and the despised things and the things that are not to nullify the things that are so that no one may boast before him. It is because of him that you are in Christ Jesus, who has become for us wisdom from God. That is our righteousness, holiness, and redemption. Therefore, it's written, let him who boasts, boast in the Lord. Christ Jesus, who has become for us wisdom from God. That is righteousness, holiness, and redemption. When Paul went preaching in Athens, he had a, a bit of a disastrous visit. Little success. He was mocked by the philosophers and the wise men of this world. And so when he writes to the church in Corinth, he thinks on this theme of, of the wise and the learned, and he questions about, he questions uh, these, these ideas of wisdom. Where is the wise man? Where is the scholar? Where is the philosopher of this age, he asks. And then he says to us, real wisdom is in fact found in Jesus Christ. Jesus has become for us wisdom. That is righteousness, holiness, and redemption. When P Paul penned this verse this passage from which we've read, he was thinking of those various communities that comprise the city of Corinth and the various communities that therefore made up the church in Corinth. Corinth was a, a Roman colony. It was situated between northern and southern Greece. When Paul first preached in Corinth, he went to the synagogue. And so it's likely that the early church in Corinth was composed of Greeks and Romans, Jewish people, and no doubt, some slaves. And so Paul seeks to address this diverse congregation. He says that Christ is everything that anyone may ever desire. He answers the deepest longings of the heart, the cry of the soul. Jesus has become for us wisdom from God. That is our righteousness, holiness, and redemption. Perhaps as Paul penned these words, he thought of those Greeks who were part of that church in Corinth. We look back to ancient Greece. We remember its philosophy its art, its architecture, its literature. Here was a group of people who sought to make sense of life and meaning. And to these people, perhaps Paul was talking directly when he spoke of wisdom. Here is this Jesus, the one who explains the mystery of light. As John said, He's the light that lighteth everyone who comes into this world. Here appearing in flesh before us is the wisdom which we have searched for throughout the years. What is the purpose of human life? What is the chief end of human being? These are still the great questions that people wrestle with today. What is life all about? What about our values? 
Perhaps we've been caused to question some of our values and our uh, way of living through recent months because of the outbreak of COVID. What is really important in life? Here, says Paul, is this wisdom that we seek, the answer to the questions of the human heart. This Jesus, He knows the secrets of eternity. He knows from where life comes. He tells us of life's chief end. He is the truth about God and the truth about humanity. Since Christ can give us the answers to such great and profound questions, He truly is our wisdom. His words, His life, His death, His resurrection, they might not silence every question, but they give us faith enough. So in today's world, scarred by COVID, torn apart by war, we hear of possibly the fall of Kabul today, a world that's scarred by poverty, by acts of inhumanity and cruelty, we need above everything else to see this wisdom that we find in Jesus, to apply this wisdom to our world's numerous problems. For in Jesus lies wisdom that can save us from ourselves. In Him lies the wisdom by which the crooked places shall be made straight and the rough places shall be made plain. Paul says Jesus is our wisdom. But then he talks also of Jesus being our righteousness. We've said that Corinth, to to where Paul was writing, was also a, a Roman colony. And we look back to Rome, don't we, and we imagine precision and might. I recently went to see an exhibition at the British Museum about Nero, fascinating. You hear about the the Roman Empire, and about life in the Roman Empire. Outwardly, there was a show of righteousness, of order, of law, of justice, and yet underneath, Rome was full of political intrigue. We see in the Gospels how some of the Roman centurions were tired of it, and they came to Jesus. They were attracted to Him, for in Jesus they saw somebody who stood for something different. And it's similar today. We hear much of an outward sort of righteousness. We talk about respecting human rights. We promote equality. We're told sometimes how best we ought to live, but the values of our society often seem to stem from a righteousness that lacks any spiritual foundation. Although on the surface everything might look good, might exhibit a certain sort of order, underneath there's sometimes a moral vacuum. Human righteousness without the love of Christ at its heart is empty. It's in Jesus that we discover true righteousness that brings generosity, forgiveness, and love. In the person of Jesus, we find a real and abiding righteousness which is made ours by His love and His grace, a righteousness that He alone can impart. Where human righteousness fails and is imperfect, Jesus steps in and makes new beginnings possible. Jesus is our wisdom, that is our righteousness, our holiness, and our redemption. That The Jewish people who were part of that church in Corinth were the people to whom God had given His law. He'd spoken to them through the prophets. The Hebrew faith teaches that humanity was created in God's image and that humanity's greatest ideal was to become like God, to become holy. And this was to be attained by keeping the Jewish law. But keeping that Jewish law was well nigh impossible. Paul himself discovered this. However hard we try, we ultimately fail. Paul said, oh, what a wretched man I am. Who shall deliver me from this death-burdened body? And he goes on and says, God will. Thanks be to him through our Lord Jesus Christ. 
by giving ourselves to Christ, by following Him day by day. Gradually, our lives are transformed, and we become more like Him, and our lives become consequently holier. Jesus is the means to holiness. Perhaps Paul, when he spoke of redemption, Jesus being our redemption, was thinking of the slave community who were part of that church in Corinth. He spoke of liberty and freedom, a message that rang true to them, a message they wanted to hear when they were held in bondage. But equally, here is a a message for all of us. The slaves longed for freedom, possessing none of the rights and privileges that were afforded to others, treated as mere goods to be bought and sold. Freedom, redemption, was something that they no doubt longed for. In a similar sense, I suppose, we can all be held in bondage at times to certain things, and we never know what it is to be truly human until we find liberty, for liberty is what we are created for, for liberty in Christ. We often find ourselves enslaved by concerns, worry, wealth, pleasures, doubts, all manner of things. Whatever might enslave us today, Paul declares that Christ can set us free. He can be for us our redemption. The overflowing, boundless love and grace of Christ can make us the greatest free people in the world. John Wesley wrote in his well-known hymn, he breaks the power of cancelled sin. He sets the prisoner free. Jesus is the source of our liberty, our redemption. So Paul, writing to the Corinthian church, longed to proclaim the reality of who this Jesus really was. This Jesus is for us our wisdom. He's the wisdom from God. That is, that is our righteousness, holiness, and redemption. All these things can be found in Him. He is everything the human heart could ever desire. The question for us today is, have we given Him that place within our hearts? Everything depends upon this. Our knowledge of who Jesus is, our understanding of what He might be unto us, it's of no value unless we give Him the chief place in our hearts. Jesus can be our wisdom. That is our righteousness, holiness, and redemption. So let us give Him that place within our hearts and lives and consciousness, so that should we boast, that we might boast of Him and of what He has done for each one of us. Amen.